I've put some pen mark or pencil marks now on the tabletop um, so that I can start building up the scenery or it helps me map out the scenery. Now essentially what I've got here is a river that's going through which has eroded the valley. That's had a major impact on the valley. So either side of the river I've got what I've called level zero which is the ground level. Then moving it up on either side of that I've got level one area to play and then level two and level, level two. two three level two three all of this here quite a large area up to there is level one and we could have some structures in there mining structures possibly even some more hills under the level two but make those portable so that's how i intend to cover the table and the way to cover it is using blue foam this stuff's brilliant. Um, I've seen in America or on American channels they use pink stuff. I've tried to find pink stuff in this country and everywhere I've been they don't sell it. So I've had to buy uh, blue stuff. Okay, the blue foam that I've had I've now cut into 200 mil or whatever that is, inches wide strips. Now I might mix and match and get better edges all the way across to minimise the gaps. But ideally one of the gaps now, because these it comes in 60mm um, boards which is two foot wide. So out of three, I don't know if you can see that, I've got six there which is one 2v2 blue cut in half. Right there, and it comes to there. So three hand drawing. Now, the way I've got it here means that I would have to put a little bit of blue on the end. Now, this isn't written in stone, so I'm just going to adjust the design slightly so that the curve comes out there. And then for this one, I'm going to have to put quite a bit of wood there, of blue stuff, blue foam. So, so that is where that one meets. So, I'll go and trim those and we'll do it for the next piece. And there are the level one trace around the edge, roughly where I wanted it to go. Now these two fit perfectly, so well, they don't need any cutting. And then get that in a little bit. So they're done. This one doesn't need any trimming off the length. And this one just a bit. And that one quite a considerable amount. So I can see the line here in the market. And then it meets right on the board, which is there. Bring that around like that. And then I can trace that line over the top. Get to that bit. There we go. I'll cut those bits. So that one goes there. How well this will show up on the camera, I'm not sure. But that is pretty much this side of the board, or level one done on that side. Let's go a bit here. When it comes to the final board, there's already a natural joint here, so I don't need to cut it down there. But I will need to cut it down this direction. So I'll place that on the edge of the boards and draw a line down. Now I've done that, these will be glued to this board and these will be glued to that one. Um, okay folks, now you see all the level one um, in place. You can see where I've cut down the edges of the boards. Hopefully you can see that. And also you can see where I've made up the pieces. Now, just to emphasize, when you draw these, they are on your guidelines. If you decide that you don't want to go to all this trouble here, you can, oop, 
you can have your level two on that side. So, you know, you're, you're the creator, you're creating this little mini world, so as you please. Okay, what I've done now is put in the uh, level two board. Now, yes, it has changed. These are different from the lines that are underneath. But essentially, I've made it a lot easier for myself and used all the off-cut shapes. Because obviously, when I cut that shape out, I have the opposite that I can use on the other side, which I think I've done there. So there's no waste. You don't notice it. You don't notice that. Now, I don't have to worry about, the only edge of the board I have to worry about is this one here. So, I'll line it up with the wood underneath, draw a line through the two protective pieces, and that's where they go. So, I'll do that next. Any minor adjustments that it might need, I think that'll be alright. Um, now, obviously, I'm going to take this home now and put it together and glue it all. The reason being is I'll never get all this in the car in one piece. That's why it's modular. So I'm going to go around now with a pen and just number all the bullets on the edges. If I number them on the edges, then it won't interfere or dent. So that table now is ready to be put in a bag. Once it's all in a bag, I can take it home, get it on the table and start uh, the next step. Okay folks, catch you in a bit. Well, so I've obviously brought the table home now. Um, I've set it up dry fit, so I've put all the pieces together, make sure I can get them in the right place. Now for glue. Now I am going to use white glue, a PVA adhesive. If you buy it, um, normally when you're um, doing any kind of craft, you'll buy PVA glue like that, in that kind of format. And that's a couple of quid for that amount. That's about six quid for that amount. And all I do, once I bought that container, is keep refilling it from this. Sometimes you have to water it down a bit because it's a bit thick, but generally it doesn't matter. Um, it's a lot cheaper than no more nails. If you're push for time or you want quick drying, then go for no more nails or something like that and just put it on, it dries in no time, seconds sometimes, uh, depending on the stuff that you buy. This takes longer. Um, basically, I'll be able to move the boards in about half an hour, but it will probably overnight before it cures. Now, this whole tub was probably six pound, so I can do the board, and I won't use all of it. You can see I've used a third of the tub over the past 12 months for all my other modelling. So this works out a lot cheaper. I'll probably use two to three pounds worth of glue on this, sticking it together. So that's the route I'm going to go. There are a few things that I need to point out though, um, before I do it. When you come to stick them, I'll just adjust the camera, I probably won't be able to see my head after I've done this, but you'll notice that the whole board is designed to fit together this way around. Now, these are the critical joints, that one there and that one there. It doesn't matter if I go in a few millimetres there, because it won't spoil the game and I can always round it off if I wish, but it does matter that I get a good joint along there and along there. So they're the edges that I'll put them up to and then glue them in place. They're the ones I'm watching. So focal point on that line and that line so that all the bits of scenery meet together because all these other gaps here I can fill with polyfiller. I can't do that with this because it has to be taken apart to be stored and the whole point of this modular board so that it's yeah. still if you are using PVA or doing any other kind of crafting, use old clothes because you are going to get messy.
Okay folks, this at the moment looks like a decorating store with all the stuff in it. Basically, you get everything you can on top of the white glue and then just leave it there to set. Get a good grip. Um, I've had to put this on today to get more on. Now, once that's set, it'll just peel off this covering they use for the cave scenarios and protect my desk. Uh, you'll see the uneven edges all the way around where it's stuck because of where I cut it in half um, and it's ready for the filler now. Now there's all different types of filler you can use you can use it that comes... I wouldn't use silicon because it's too rubbery I have used this here, instant filler um, that I got from Pound World uh, to fill in the gaps, the gaps are quite considerable you can see on this side the gaps there we're well, still waiting to be filled and I've started going along the edge. You can't all do it in one block because it'll just fall off so you build it up over time in different layers. So this is what you have so far. Now, rather, this is convenient but it's also expensive. Even at a pound a tube you're still going to use quite a bit of this. Now I've got some trade polyfiller or polycell as it's called in the UK which I'm going to mix up with water and start to work on the other boards. What you have here is the edge to the hills and it's unlike any hill you will ever see like that. So there's all different kinds of ways of working that and you could work it um, so that it ends up looking like this if you want to which is just by dragging the knife across it um, in the way that it doesn't want to be dragged across. Now the, the best time to do this is before you stick it down obviously but um, I didn't. Okay, um, hopefully this will get the anger, I'll just oh, don't want to get the tripod out. Dig into the board with a knife and then just clip it away. A different angle, work into it, clip it away and then you gradually work your way around the board doing this and you get this kind of effect. With that, once it's done, uh, be careful not to cut your thumb off because it's really difficult to pick up a thumb if you just cut it off. Work your way around to get this kind of facing on the edges and it will look more rock-like. Okay, I don't know how well it shows up now on the camera. Um, but you can see the effect there that that has on the impact and it basically softens the edge and makes it look a bit more like sandstone it'll look a lot more like sandstone once the um, the rest of the paintwork and everything is done when your uh, polyfiller sets and your glue set you should have good connections all the way out um, you will have lines like this from where you put the stuff on um, if you just scratch over the flat piece of metal, you'll get rid of most of them um, and it'll leave some of the softer imprints uh, which the paint will help fill in, even if you've got cat paw prints because they were going in it and, uh, and you weren't around. But that way you can tidy it up nicely before painting. So all I'm doing, and it's a bit tricky to do one handed, a two handed job, is just work my way around gently moving over the surface. Okay, now I'll get rid of all that dust off there, then I'll begin painting. That's what it should look like once you've done it. Um, so it's not by any means slick because, you know, its side isn't slick. You do want some uh, imperfections in it to give the illusion of reality. So that is just this tile ready for its first gloss of paint now. So I'll get the paint out and then start doing that.